it's really all about emotional intelligence. It's really all about self-awareness because that's what drives people. It's not the results. It's not the, the data we send them. It's not people want to be heard and listened to by their leaders. Conversations are at the heart of everything we do, but how do you turn a conversation into revenue? Welcome to B2B EQ, a podcast from Unifor. I'm your host, Tim Harris. Join me as I interview business leaders and market makers to learn how to move deals forward, scale best practices, and establish relationships that create value and grow revenue. Let's get started. Welcome to this episode of B2B EQ, where we discover the impact EQ has on business, relationships, and revenue. Today's guest is an innovator who combines her passions for music and leadership, a globally recognized sales leader with 30 plus years of experience. She helps leaders remix their own style so they can leave a positive legacy that their people won't forget and drive results effectively. Author of the book, Side B, Remix Your Leadership Style, CEO and leadership DJ at Side B Consulting, Ms. Paula White. Paula, so good to have you. Thank you, Tim. So glad to be here. This is going to be fun. Oh, this will be a great time. And I will uh, hopefully have some back-end intro music coming into this as well, because I know that music is such a hot topic in what you're doing and the impact it has for teams, revenue leaders, and our own personal performance. So excited to dive into that. That's really, it's kind of the crux of the whole idea behind really bringing music, turning your music back on. I I love it. When uh, hopefully a lot of listeners are turning their podcasts up and getting ready for an exciting episode. Um, I'm going to jump right into it because when we first met, you were leading revenue teams and and were managing sellers. And I want to know from your perspective, in the B2B world of sales, what is the one soft skill that's creating the biggest impact on relationships, but also, and this is the important part, driving revenue? Communication. Tell me a little bit more about that. I like Yeah. That. So, you know, everyone talks about all the hard skills, the resume-based skills, right? But without communication... And without the knowing to actively listen, to become that unexpected listener, being able to choose your words wisely, being able to communicate with people, revenue is not going to go anywhere. It's going to stall. And the reason I say that is because so many people today and in the past and from when we were, we were a human, what do I want to say? A human Help me out here. <laughs> From the start of time, From the civilization, the whole thing. Yes. Whole, it's all been about ways we communicate with each other, right? That's a very fascinating thread to think of because you do. You, the first, uh, you go back to cave drawings and those things, it was all about communicating some message to somebody. We've gotten a lot better now, right? Billboards and text messages and all the other things, these video calls. But at right. the end of the day, communication is one of our, our core foundations that makes us human. You're right. It is. It is. And if we don't have that, then we remain silent. And in today's world, it's interesting. I find that communication, although we have more of it, we also have more misunderstanding. And so oh my goodness. how do you see sellers working through that? Because communication, great thing to say, but... In, in real life world of, of I've got to, you know, get in front of a prospect, I've got to explain what, what we do, but I also need to listen and understand what somebody needs. Mm-hmm. How do you clearly communicate? W- what are it, some of those in action? It is really challenging. And I put out a LinkedIn post on this just yesterday. And as a matter of fact, is we have four stages of communication at this point right? Um, We have canned, reflective, active, and unexpected. But what's happening is in the past, communication was done face-to-face on the phone call. And we would be on and selling for 
hours in a meeting, seeing the visual cues, listening for those audible cues mm -hmm. when we're on the phone, having those cues. Today, you go to Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and you have 30 seconds to sell someone on your idea. Mm -hmm. And that's next to impossible anymore. The amount of noise. And I think that's what you're getting to. On our last guest, we had um, Ethan Butte, and he said, you know, the, the pollution in the communication is what's it, it, dragging everything down. It is noisy. It is noisy out there. It is almost deafening that we are unable to communicate because so much is coming at us. And, and one one thing you've mentioned on that unable to communicate that you constantly, I think, like hit into and you've done and you've been in your own practice is really putting that spark of creativity into that communication. And I want to get there because to me, there's something fascinating about the way you've taken leadership practice and training and development and getting people into their best sellers, their best selves. But there's also a creative spark in how you communicate and, and how you do some of your messaging. So how's that it work? Is. It is. For me, it's all through music. As a dyslexic, um, the way that I got through school, the way that I got through programs and memorization and all of that was really through music and putting my own words to songs to remember, you know, what we used to do it when we were little, the ABCs. I mean, do you still sing the ABCs to remember what comes after a certain letter? It's true. Or like some of the jingles that are constantly stuck in our head because we have, for whatever reason, put them to memory. They've stuck. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you do this and, you know, you can do this with a script. You can do this with, you know, the Gettysburg Address or, you know, whatever it is that you need to remember. And I'm not going to say memorize but what you need to remember, you put a rhythm to, you put a harmony to it. And that way you continually are able to be in sync with your message. And music has a way of transforming us too. So I know that, you know, you said, a, you know, I use it as a metaphor and a tool. So as a tool, music has a way to get us in the mood that we need to be in to be able to communicate properly. I love that because I think of sales professionals right now. Gartner put out a stat that said 95% of sales professionals are burnt out. Mm. That's I'm scary. It's, I'm surprised it's that low. <laughs> it's a stressful <laughs> job and it's becoming more and more stressful. They're asked to do more and more things. I think the role of a seller with buyers getting communication and, and messaging and information kind of on demand anywhere has become yeah. much tougher, hard to get at the attention of anybody. So I, I like that. And I want to go back to the music point because it makes me think of an at-bat song. You know, I've, yeah. sales has always been paralleled to sports performance. There's been brands always. that have done it, you know, all of those things. They're, they're the high performers of the revenue team. Yep. that are star athletes. Yep. So tell me a little bit more about the science behind this. And then also, I know this goes back to some of your time managing sales teams and kind of really pulling out the best in your teams. So mm -hmm. would love to hear kind of your past experience that brought you here too. Sure. So let's talk about the past experience first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because when I was managing sales teams, there was a way that we need, I needed to communicate with them, to get the best out of them, their performance. Mm -hmm. And that is your softer skill of being able to understand what it is that really drives them. Mm -hmm. Some people say money, some people will say a house, but you gotta go deeper than that. What is it and get specific on really understanding what is gonna drive them and remember that. And then you can help them by finding a song that may relate to that and send them a song and say, hey, thought of you today. Or the other thing I would do is I would create a song for the year and that would be our theme song. And I wouldn't just do it. We would all vote on it. We would, you know, go mm -hmm. around the room, share what concerts we went to. 
And what that does is it just brings down a level of stress and adds a little bit of fun and, and flair to the sales process, right? And I think it's neat because you talk about remote sellers. We don't see each other as often. Maybe we get to come into the office every once in a while, but typically people aren't spending every day there anymore. Right. So having that camaraderie, that, that, that common song, that common kind of anthem for your team, it, it's another way to kind of cut through that disconnect at times. It's kind of fun. It is. It is. And, it, and you can create a team playlist, right? And Love that them. playlist can actually go throughout just the team as the only one who's going to add things to it. And it might be something that's related to the theme or something to get somebody going or, you know, just having it on in the background where when you're doing not the necessarily the sales work, but the admin work that you mm -hmm. got to put mm -hmm. into it too. having that own your own playlist is magical. I like what you're saying there, because you go back to EQ and I'm thinking one of the foundations that we talk about in this is motivation. Right. Sellers have to be, it's always been said, self-starters. They have to be able to look at that doom and gloom of the phone or the, the cold outreach and be able to kind of create something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. That takes a, a zero to one movement. It takes the, I've got to go put these things into action. And so every day kind of sharing that playlist and maybe a fun way to kind of, again, spark that motivation in a team. Well, and, and going back to the first part of your question, the science yeah. behind it, right? Yeah. When yeah. you hear something that is energetic and motivating to you, what happens? Your dopamine rises. Mm -hmm. But and and when that happens, the serotonin rises and your happy chemicals start going. And now you're seen that way on the phone or on video with a smile on your face. And that comes across in communication to your clients. But also, I went up to Chicago and I actually had a brain uh, a brain test done. I put mm -hmm. the cap on and she played some music for me. I gave her some music that I liked and some music that I wasn't really, didn't really care for. Mm -hmm. You could tell that the theta waves, which are your creativity waves, when there's music that a song came on that I really thoroughly enjoyed, it spiked. Wow which means your creativity and your yep. passions and everything starts. Being. And that's what music can do for you. That's interesting when you think of where sales is going and you think of where we're being asked to no longer just provide a transaction or to provide information and take an order. It's very much solutioning. I mean, none of these as, as we work together, none of these are simple implementations. None of these have, oh yeah, easy as one, two, three, put it in there. Great. We're, yeah. we're good to go. <laughs> yeah. In a bulk and I'll, I'll sell it. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so because things have gotten so complex, all mm -hmm. the channels we have to go through, all the, all the different things and approvals, it's, it's interesting to think, okay, one, we're keeping our motivation, but two, that, that boost in creativity. Maybe those little things. And I like what you said there. When when I'm smiling, when I'm sharing that smile over video in a meeting, mm -hmm. I can't help but think that the person on the other end, the prospect or the customer, is going to smile a little bit too. Absolutely. Over the phone, you can hear a smile. When those, those emotions, that feeling, like you said, the dopamine and everything else, that's your leading insights into what action is really going to happen next. If I don't feel good and, and, and I'm not happy about something, the action that I'm going to take probably isn't the positive one. Correct. And so when we think of deals going into indecision, when we think of deals being lost, a lot of that probably just comes to, well, I didn't feel good about it. Mm -hmm. So I let it go. Mm-hmm. And that's really causing a lot of struggle in, in sales organizations right now. It is because as, and, and, and I'll say this, a lot of sales organizations, if you ask them what their number one song is about their work, it's going to be 21 pilots stressed out, <laughs> right? <laughs> I like um, that. Uh, see, uh, oh, I can't think of the title, but up a cripple Creek. We're mm -hmm. up a cripple Creek um, or 
you know, just having that ability. So even when you're stressed out and you're not happy, music will add to that as well. Your cortisol will help. So you've got to be very aware of that too. You don't want to go down and circle that path. That's right? that's very true. Yeah. So a lot of, lot of impacts on the individual seller. I want to go back to, because I, we're talking about these and some people may say, oh, woo woo in terms of we're, we're playing music and, and this stuff. But there's, there's behavioral science, there's psychology behind this. And you've yes, gone yes. to levels even deeper. And we've mm-hmm. actually talked about it in analyzing kind of, I'd say your, your balance beam, so to say. Yep. It, it's, yep. it's where your strengths are. If mm-hmm. you over-index on those strengths, how they can maybe lead you astray. If you're not using those strengths, maybe how they can leave you astray. So how do you work with people to balance kind of that business acumen, I need to get things done with mm-hmm. the soft skills. And tell well, us a little bit about those assessments. I love that. I love that because when I think of music, again, as I said, I use it as a metaphor as mm-hmm. well. If you think of the old 45s, side A was the popular song. It was the one that was supposed to be the money maker, the one that everybody was go out to Peaches Records, go through the little, you know, all the songs to pull out yep. the 45s to buy. Side B, and it was called Side B in the very beginning in 1942. Side B was just a recorded. It was really unpublished. I mean, it was published, but it was unpublicized. Mm-hmm. So that's how I think of, of business. Your Side A are all your resume skills, negotiating, budgeting, planning, sales, prospecting, all of those things that we need to do. Mm-hmm. Side B are all your emotional based skills or your relational skills. Now, I've worked with a neuroscientist, a psychologist, and the Harrison Group to be able to dive into 10 personas, side B personas, to help people understand what is inherently within them. Because let's let's face it, Tim, you you and I both know that not everybody is empathetic and vulnerable. Yeah, right? we don't get those just sprinkles of, of dust every day. Wake up. Oh, my gosh, it's amazing. No, we yeah. all have our flaws and our strengths. That's right. Yeah. So these personas are courageous, trustworthy, ethical, um, curious. Are you curious? And I've kind of related them to a band member. Now, you may have multiple of these traits that you're really strong at, but until you know what they are, you're not conscious of them. So you're not aware how to use them at its finest with your people. For example, Mm -hmm. I'm a drummer. So my side A is very forward thinking. And my side B is curious. And we put those two together because as a drummer, What is their role in the band? Lead the song. Keep the tempo and lead the song. Move it forward. And that's what a business leader does in the forward thinker. But how do they get there? They get there by asking questions, by being curious. So we put those two together because that really is a way to complement your side A, but have the skills of your side B. If you inherently have that within you, you are most likely a visionary forward thinker. That's interesting. Now, how does that relate to then when we fall off the track? Because we all do, right? I can think of that other side where it's, I'm moving things forward. I'm moving things forward so much that maybe I'm bulldozing all of the things kind of very much like sales outreach right now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do so many activities to move this forward that that I'm going to bulldoze the prospect with content and emails and information. And if you're listening to this, if you're on the sales side, I apologize. We all know we've done it. If we're on the other side of the receiving side, you're probably going, I felt that. Yeah. We've all been there. We have. And that's why we have to balance both our side A and our side B. It's not one or the other, Tim, Mm -hmm. because if you're all side A, think of it. Let's look at leadership, for example. Okay, let's look at an optimistic leader or that 
falls off the track and and a leader becomes harsh and micromanaging and mm -hmm. and everything wants to drive 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 what do their people think of them yeah negative negative Th their song just went downhill to a to a not so greatest hits it's on the it's on the back yeah. of the album it's <laughs> out, right yep. Yep. <laughs> so then you have if you're tapping into only your side b of being optimistic and happy and cheery and all of this what do your people think of you oh pie in the sky yeah it's you know lucy in the sky with diamonds okay exactly <laughs> lucy in the sky with diamonds you got stressed out and lucy in the sky with diamonds you have to be able to balance that to be to be able to get the results that you need and to leave a positive legacy with your people who are going to remember you for being both accountable and kind, dependable and curious. That's the teeter-totter. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the art. I that's think when we always talk about the art and science, we've all gotten good on the science side of things, but the art's something that's a little harder. It's a little more human. Well, and that's what I say. We have done such a great job developing our resume skills or side A skills that our side B skills have been put on the back burner for so long until we realize that without our side B skills, we're not gonna have retention, productivity, and continuous growth. It's something that I think we look at as bigger, larger group. There's been more emphasis on the soft skills lately. Maybe that's coming out of COVID and being a little bit more detached and, and less interconnected. So. There was a lot more of just that back and forth yep. and a lot of noise and a lot of, you know, frustration and mm -hmm. less, less, you know, empathy probably out there. Cause that was the big kind of golden thread that came through the last few years. Right. I want more empathy from, from buyers. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because as you think of a career progression, do you see those two sides being different at different stages of a career? Do you see them? kind of balancing out at different times because that's what i'm that's my hunch that's what i'm feeling yes you do and as you climb the corporate ladder and and you start understanding the data and the tasks and and you're tasked more with getting results doing this so your mind shifts and it becomes more of a group think how are we going to get this goal accomplished how are we going to get this number in revenue Here's the data all behind it. They're saying they want empathy, 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 but we need this. Interestingly enough, if you take the group think out of it and you take the empathy, even the empathy has a group think part mm -hmm. of it. You take the group think out of it and you start realizing what what type of leader are you? What type of sales leader are you uniquely to be able to drive results for your people who are going to positively communicate and react with you? That's what we need to experience. I'd love to see on a resume sometime, you know, here are my my side B skills, right? Uh -huh. I'm curious, I'm, you know, uh, courageous and trustworthy and ethical and and kind and gracious and optimistic. I'd love to see some of those 10 on there because even when people are brought into a company based on their resume skills, we don't really know what their people skills are, relational yeah. skills are until we've been with them a while. Well, and we look at the outcomes, right? It's always, okay, it's outcome-based, it's outcome-driven. What did you close? What did you accomplish? What did you do for me today? Yep. But we don't necessarily look at what are the things that enabled that person to do that because maybe they just left a total wake in their in their path behind them doing it, accomplished mm -hmm. the job, but but destroyed everything in the process. Or right. I find that as you move up in your career, it's much more the side B skills that are actually the ones that will change the outcomes more than the side A skills because now I'm not the one doing it. I'm the one that now has to coach and consult and help and support and let somebody else do it, empower them to go do it. 
but you've lived so long in your side A that the skills on your side B are un are not tuned. If I we've want to got use yeah, it. I like that. We've mm -hmm. gone into atrophy. Yes, they are not tuned, and we really need to tune those skills again. And and I agree with you one hundred percent because it is about results, 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 and then group think, group think, group think. But we've got to be more creative listening to our own songs, creating our own genres. I remember being asked, what is your secret sauce? And I never really could explain it, mm -hmm. but it was really connecting with my people and communicating with my people. And I don't want to call them my people because I worked for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But this is also, I think for, for managers and leaders, critical. But when I think of an individual contributor, I think of the salespeople that I've engaged with or some of the marketing people that I've engaged with that very honestly don't want to lead a team. Yeah. But they are uniquely them. They're the ones that stand out. They're the ones that are memorable. They're the ones that create an experience. We always talk about experience, but they create an experience that you want to come back to. Yeah. I, I always think there's there's some times in your life, and this is the the interesting kind of back and forth. We always say we never want to be sold, but when you really get sold well, oh, it's, it's, a, it's an enjoyable experience. It is. It is. And when you're sold bad, oh, you can see it. It is so <laughs> clear. I yep. was on the phone just the other day and I'm just going to tell you and, and your audience, this is a first, first here mm -hmm. that I'm going to be vulnerable using that word. I got on the phone with the client and I sold so bad. I literally said to them, I'm sorry, this is really horrible. And I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but sometimes that honesty and just, hey, this isn't this morning on this, this podcast before we got on, I, I can, I can attest to myself it was you know the technology is failing everything's going on i'm going paula i want you to have an amazing experience we want to do this again and have a great experience but hey this is reality this is reality and that's yeah. what makes it so important to be able to communicate and i i am in fear that mm -hmm. our future is going to evolve communication so much with ai and and technology and and even shorter TikTok and and Instagram and tweet Twitter and all of those things, which I love. They have, have their get, place. They have their place. And I get lost in it sometimes and I have to really <laughs> cut myself off. But we as a as in humanity are losing this art of communication. We've got to be able to listen and understand we've become so so geared to listening to people which is the first stage i talk about is canned mm. listening and that's your elevator music that is your grocery store music that's your jingles that's what you hear on tv it's just mm -hmm. what you hear in the background right but mm -hmm. then you answer like my son i love him so much and he plays video games but i don't understand him so he's talking and I'll go, that's nice, Brad. And, and my kids started busting out laughing at me. And I'm like, what? That's your canned answer. Yeah. When you're not listening, that's nice, Brad. This is such a good call out for our sales meetings, because I feel like that's one of the things we all have to be really, really, really careful with on these video meetings. Yeah. I'm two seconds away from, yeah, I'm staring here. Okay, great. But you don't know if I'm playing a video game or texting somebody or shopping on Amazon or, or sending out the RFP or the email, I've got to get out in two minutes. Yeah. And then you get the canned answer. Mm -hmm. And we take that as a signal that, oh, they're actually still interested. Keep going. <laughs> we have to look at everybody's canned answer because we all have one. Mm -hmm. My husband has one. My mother has one. Her says, okay, goodbye. It's a can't response and we all have it and so i say when we're conscious of it then we can get competent and clarity about our communication 
So every time I you hear me say, well, that's nice, you'll know that I wasn't listening. She zoned out. I zoned out. <laughs> we lost. Paula's <laughs> left the building for a second. But then she's back. Yeah. We all have that, though. We all, to your point, I think that's something interesting to to look through. And maybe, you know, individual contributors on this call are thinking, ah, on my next video meeting, I might just pause for a second or say something a little outlandish and see if somebody responds <laughs> back with their canned answer. If their canned answer. Find yeah. out what your own canned answer is, too. That, too. Ask everybody. Do you know yours? That's... I don't know. I'm out now. I'm gonna have to pay attention. Yeah, there's some self awareness that's gonna have to happen that's right there. Right, and yeah. that's what all this is about. It's really all about emotional intelligence. It's really all about self awareness, because that's what drives people. It's not the results. It's not the the data we send them. It's not people want to be heard and listened to by their leaders. That was a mic drop and, and something I think we all know, but so hard to put into practice. Yeah. So maybe something we can all implement is just a little bit more listening, a little bit clearer communication. And the one thing I'm going to say is always showing up with a smile. That's right. Always show up with a smile because you never know what's on the other side. Yes. So yeah. what excites you about the future? What do you think is going to change in, in the business world, in the sales world? What are, you, what are we going to see? in the next few years? So what I'm seeing and I'm hoping to see is that people are going to start understanding that it's a balance, right? We can't have too much of the corporate world mm -hmm. going to really going to the soft side. Uh -huh. And but we can't have them staying in the hard side. There's got to be a balance somewhere, and I'm hoping to see that balance come to fruition and understanding that we can be ourselves when we're at work. We can understand that who we are at work is who we are normally, and that would really be great. I love that. So take me back a little bit. Yeah. Take me back. I want to learn a little bit about Paula and how you got to this place. Because I love your vision for the future. I think it's it's exciting to hear that that's where it's going. And and as I have five nieces and I start looking at, you know, where they're going and what they look at and, and how they see the world, I think the empathy piece and all of those are, are starting to come out and the authenticity mm -hmm. more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So take me back to how you got here, Paula. Okay. And kind of what brought you on this path? I know you were a sales leader. Tell me a little bit about kind of yeah. all that journey. So interestingly enough, and I hope I'm, I don't want to go too far back, but mm -hmm. I had this goal at 10 years old to be an Olympic swimmer, right? And I could jump off the block and I still hold a record today from when I was 10 years old. So that that's pretty fun. And so with that, it was all about drive. It was all about competition and this, and that is who I was. When I was an individual contributor, I was always told, put your head down, get, get your- Get shit done. Thank you, get your <laughs> shit done, right? And, and that's the way it was, but we had more time to communicate with people. We had longer conversations, but we got it done. Mm -hmm. I, this, what we're in now is almost scary yeah right but from there i went into leadership and then into um a director role and really started managing and leading managers mm -hmm. i found so much joy in that piece that my my drive started to change mm -hmm. in the corporation. I wanted to lead people to be better, right? Mm -hmm. And and achieve the results, of course, but there was so much passion about people that I left my, my corporate job mm -hmm. two and a half years ago, wrote a book, and here I am 
doing workshops and helping people understand their side B so that they can really drive results and be productive and love what they're doing. I, it's amazing. Now tell me a little bit about Side B Consulting, how it came to be, some of the the things you're offering. I, I want people to know about this. She's amazing to follow on LinkedIn and your content, but um, I got the opportunity to do a little bit of an assessment and it was eye-opening for me. It was definitely vulnerable in terms of you're, you're looking at a mirror of the things that are maybe holes in your socks or, or challenges that you need to work on. Um, but, but tell everybody a little bit about some of the services you're offering and, and what you're working on with sales teams, especially the assessment that we took. Yeah. So it, first of all, the whole idea came to me about five years ago when I went to a Struts concert. And I bought these VIP tickets because I love that band. If you're ever listening to a band that is from the UK, that is amazing. Check out the struts. Okay. But I wanted to get front close to front row. So we bought VIP tickets, met them, walked into the venue, and I forgot that these venues, the first floor is called the mosh pit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, in the, my mid fifties at the time, that wasn't going to work for me. So my husband and I ran upstairs and got balcony front row balcony seats and it was mm-hmm. the best, but there was a moment that I looked down and I saw how the band and the fans were reacting and connecting with each other and communicating through this music that was going on. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't take my eyes off of it. And this thought popped into my head and I was like, why can't leaders generate that kind of experience for their employees as musicians do for their fans? Hmm. And side B was born. Wow. It's interesting way to think about it because in some ways, we, we look up to our, our leaders, I think, as coaches or friends. We have those common connections, those those personal connections. But you're right. There is something about a motivating factor that a, that a musical act has on an audience yeah, or that a great leader has on a crowd. And that's what I – that's what some of the services I offer at Side B is I have a, um assessment mm-hmm. that – you can take a one it's a one day one assessment and we really look at 12 paradoxes of your leadership yourself and the way you achieve your goals and find out if you are balanced or out of balance and where some holes are and what we can do to really look at that then if you want to go further we can coordinate some one-to-one coaching after that Um, i also work with uh, corporations doing workshops on active listening, choosing your words wisely. And those usually are about a day to a day and a half workshops. Um, you can do the lunch and learn a shorter version of it. So those are the really the two things that I, I offer is individual coaching and then work corporate workshops. And you've been on this journey now from working inside corporate America, from leading sales teams, being an individual contributor, now out on your own. If you had to go back, graduating college, and you had to introspective, you know, you got to look back and say, what would I have told myself back then? What What would I wish the advice would have been? What do you have for yourself? Follow your dream. Yeah? Yeah. And the reason I say that is because... I look at the kids today, and I call them kids because they're my kids' ages, (laughs) and they are all following their dreams, and they're living life to the fullest. And I was in this go to school, go to college, graduate, get a job, find a spouse, buy a house, have kids. Mm -hmm. This timeline that we all at my age were all brought up to say, this is what success means. It's disruptive now. And I wish I would have known that I could have disrupted it. There's a lot of people listening. They they, they think right now is a, a spark in their journey, in their personal journey to go do some of those things. So I think it's perfect timing for that message. 
And yeah. so I hope those that are listening, maybe it is that call to action to say, whether it's a side project or something that you want to pursue for fun, go do it. Because you've had or, a lot of success with your side B. Or find out what your side B is mm -hmm. and understand what that is. So happy to help anyone on that journey. And, you know, this I love having these conversations because people say the soft skills, but I think the soft skills are the much harder skills. A good point. It's it's a paradox, right? Taking that extra time, take that breath before you respond, being there for somebody, being present in the moment and listening. It's the gift we can all give somebody else, but it's something that as we live in this society where it's give me this today, get this done, do this, move this, make this happen. We sometimes forget that it's how we make people feel that drives those opportunities and drives those decisions more than what we said. That's correct. Well, Think Paula, of it this way. Think of it this way, mm -hmm. that my old boss told me this real quick and then I'll be quiet here. But oh, okay. people buy on emotion and justify it logically. So people don't think of your, think of the biggest thing that you bought. Mm -hmm. Why did you buy it? Did you buy it because it made, it checked all the data boxes and everything you had, or did you buy it because you had an emotional feeling of what it could bring you? Well, I just got married not too long ago. So I can tell you, as I just redid a house, we did that. A lot of those decisions were, yes, trust me, you could have gotten things for cheaper. You could have gotten things easier, or simpler, or not waited so long or whatever it was. But there's a lot of emotion there. A lot You're right. of emotion. Yep. Because it's something we want. We love. We're excited about. We feel good about. Mm -hmm. And then that drives us to, like you said, put that logic behind it. Well, it has these features and it can do these things. But I don't think it's until we've internalized, ooh, I'm excited about that. I want that. I'm intrigued. I can experience that this mm -hmm. way. Yeah, absolutely. But you're talking about a 70-inch TV I, with surround sound. I can experience the Super Bowl, March Madness, with movies, you know, in a mm -hmm. whole new light. It's the experiences that we have emotions to as well. That's true. Mm-hmm. So speaking of experiences and passions, what are some of your passions outside of work before we wrap this up? Ah, well, you know, number one is going to concerts, right? <laughs> and I have a passion that I have not done yet, but um, I want to travel over in Europe. There's many places that I want to see. And so my passion is to drive what I need to do so I can be able to do that here in the future. I love it. Well, I'm excited to hear about your travels to Europe. I want to see pictures and I hope yeah. to have you back on maybe from a remote place somewhere over there. Ooh, that would be and fun. And so we will have to, but for the time being, if those that are listening want to connect with you, Paula, where can they find you? You can find me at LinkedIn, uh, Paula S. White. Mm -hmm. There's an S in there. Uh, my website, Paula S. as in Sam White. Or they can go to my YouTube channel, Instagram, and I think you have those in the show notes, right? We will. We'll have all of those details in the show notes along with side B and a link to your book about remixing your leadership style. Paula, I can't, can't say thank you enough. It has been fun to be on this journey with you. I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you so much. And to our audience, thank you all for listening. I hope you've learned something, had a few laughs, and you go out and go find your playlist or your theme song for the day. Turn it on, turn it up loud, and have a great time out there. Again, Paula, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tim. It's been my honor. And I, as you know, I always love talking to you. So anytime, my friend. Thank you. Well, Paula, it's been another exciting episode of B2B EQ, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Talk soon. All right. We hope you enjoyed this episode of B2B EQ. Be sure to rate, subscribe, and follow the podcast for more exciting insights. To learn more about the value of EQ and the technology powering today's conversations, visit us at unifor.com.